Hello everyone, my name is Angel Enrique. For the last six weeks in the Biochem Core program, I have been researching a protein called Anchorin Repeat and Soxbox Protein 9. I will refer to the protein as ASB9 later in the presentation. The objective of my research is to analyze how ASB9 recognizes such a wide array of protein targets for degradation. Before we can get into how I will be analyzing the changes in ASB9 surface, I will briefly explain its background. ASB9 acts as the E3 ubiquitin ligase subunit in the ubiquitination process. This means that they are proteins that are used to mark other proteins for degradation. Degradation is important because it is a key function in cell homeostasis. Homeostasis in the cell is simply the balance between all of its systems. One way we can picture this on a larger scale is how the kidneys maintain homeostasis in the body by regulating amounts of salt and water excreted. Interestingly, ASB9 is predominantly located in the kidneys. In order to better understand the role of anchorin repeats in the ubiquitination process, we can picture ourselves as a city. Each city has a recycling plant. The recycling plant would represent the E3 ligase complexes. The recycling collectors can be represented as the ASB9 protein. The material that is being recycled in these recycling plants would be the protein targeted for degradation. Some materials being recycled such as aluminum cans can be reused. Similarly, proteins can be broken down into amino acids and also be reused. Ancurin is able to bind to many other proteins and target them for degradation such as creatine kinase. The creatine kinase that I will be analyzing acts as a homodimer in the brain as well as in other tissues. While we have a model for how ASB9 binds to creatine kinase, we do not understand how ASB9 binds to any other proteins. By analyzing the difference in its conformations that enable these different interaction pathways, we can gain more insight on the binding process of ASB9 to other proteins. Given that background knowledge, I can now explain ways in which ASB9's surface changes are analyzed. Examining these surface changes requires two analysis methods that include RMSD clustering and protein-protein docking. The first step in analyzing my protein was to cluster data from molecular dynamic simulations through RMSD clustering. RMSD is an acronym for root mean square deviation, which ultimately represents the overall distance between atoms. RMSD clustering was used to show the best representative structures of the molecular dynamic simulations of ASB9. These structures will help narrow down which centroids I will use to dock with creatine kinase. Here are the structures of the top five cluster centroids overlaid. As you can see, these centroids are very similar to one another. The average RMSD for all five centroids is 0.165 nanometers or 1.65 angstroms. This means that the centroid did not fluctuate too much, although there are conformational changes in the active site. The final step is the protein docking. Docking is a computational simulation of a candidate ligand binding to a receptor. We can visualize the docking through these figures shown here. The program used to dock the proteins is called ZDoc. This step was simple. I uploaded both the PDB files of the ASB9 centroids and creatine kinase into the ZDoc interface. The results contain the top 10 configurations for each centroid. ZDoc chose these 10 configurations based on their docking score. A higher score means that the bond between the two proteins is tighter. I have yet to analyze these results, but I'm hoping to find that one or more of the cluster centroids that I found from RMSD clustering docks consistently well into creatine kinase. If these structures do, then I will take these for further docking analysis into other proteins that ASB9 is known to interact with. Lastly, I would like to express my appreciation for this opportunity. I have had a great time in the lab working alongside all of my peers. This will be an experience that I will never forget. For this, I would like to thank the following people for their help and support. Ms. Henwood, my college advisor for informing me about the Pinhead Institute, the Pinhead Institute for funding my journey to La Jolla and finding me an internship at the Biochem Corps program. Dr. Romeo Morrow for creating this program that has allowed me to research independently and grow as a young computational chemist. I would also like to thank Dr. Jamie Schiffer for her guidance, dedication, and patience. Finally, I would like to thank all of my peers. Each one of you has helped me at some point in my research. We have made some great memories in the lab, 
I will miss you all. Thank you for listening.